Warning, the contents of this review contain scenes of horror and violence which may disturb some viewers. The game itself covers topics regarding suicide and taboos, so if you're not comfortable with the content or if the scenes in this game aren't for you, then turn back now. Viewer discretion is advised. Project Zero, or Fatal Frame as it's known in the US, or Zero in Japan, is a series which at the time of this review is celebrating its 20th anniversary. With said anniversary, Koei Tecmo have decided to remaster the fifth game in the main series, which is the one we're looking at today. Project Zero, Maiden of Blackwater, was originally released for the Nintendo Wii U in 2014 in Japan, and 2015 everywhere else, and this remaster boasts updated visuals, the introduction of a free photo mode, and different outfits to name a few. The bikinis from the original Japanese Wii U release and the Nintendo outfits have been removed for all regions and versions of the remaster. For transparency, a copy of this game was provided to me courtesy of Koei Tecmo. I'll also refer to the games as Project Zero given that this was the name that the series has in my region. There will also be out of context spoilers in this review as well. Project Zero Maiden of Blackwater takes place on the fictional Mount Hikami. The mountain is based on two locations in Japan, the infamous Sea of Trees Akigahara at the base of Mount Fuji which is a well known location for suicides, and Mount Asore which shares a lot of its geography and associations with being a gateway to the underworld. Mount Hikami is well known in the game for the numerous amount of suicides, and it's advised and clearly ignored by the entire cast of the game to avoid the place after sunset where the link between the world of the living and the dead weaken, and ghosts appear. At the start of the game you are introduced to the movement controls by playing as Mew Hinasaki until she's captured by a ghost. After the prologue you take control of Yuri Kozakata, a girl who can see and interact with the supernatural, and you learn the basics of the Camera Obscura, your main weapon throughout the game which can hurt and banish the hostile ghosts that stand in your way. Yuri and her friend Hisoka Kurosawa have been tasked by Ren Hojo, who is your third playable character, to find an album featuring post-mortem photos, or well, photos of dead people. After retrieving the album and fending off a hostile ghost, they return to the antique shop that Hisoka runs. Shortly after, Hisoka disappears while working on a missing persons case, and Yuri must brave the dangers of the mountain to find her. The game puts you in the shoes of Yuri, Ren, and Mew as they face the dangers of Mount Hikami while looking for answers. Yuri to find Hisoka, Ren to understand the dream that's been haunting him and to investigate the post-mortem photos, and Mew to find her mother, a character you should know well if you've played the first and third games. But... Is this game any good? Find out in... The Good. The game setting and atmosphere is easily its strongest point, and the setting also plays a huge part in some of the core gameplay elements. From a ruined inn, to the forests around the mountain, and a shrine filled with dolls and effigies to name a few places, the locations and the music really knows how to make you feel uneasy, and having to deal with ghosts in small confined areas or corridors really plays on a sense of claustrophobia. There's a big emphasis on water in this game as over the course of the game your characters can get drenched in it, whether it's from being out in the rain or being knocked down by a hostile ghost into a body of water. While it can serve as eye candy, and I'll admit they've done a pretty good job with showing wet clothes, it does come with the drawback of having your character take more damage and hostile ghosts appearing more often. The setting also ties in with key parts of the story. As you explore Mount Hikami, you'll also be finding an unsettling amount of reliquaries, as well as having enemies pop out from them. Without spoiling the story, this plays an important part in the history around the mountain. I really like the sense of dread and uneasiness this game has given me whenever I explore a new area for the first time. There are a couple of stages where Ren has to play security guard at Hisoka's antique shop to make sure enemies don't harm the other characters which I think was quite refreshing, and a nice change of pace with having to check on the security cameras and going to a room when there's any unusual activity. As I said before, this is the game's strongest point. There are some other gameplay elements I did like, and this revolves around the use of the Camera Obscura as well as fending off ghosts. The Camera Obscura is an important part of the Project Zero series, with the photos you take of ghosts dealing damage to them, or taking photos of non-hostile ghosts for points. These points can be used to upgrade the camera's focal distance, film reload speed, damage and spirit absorption, or the strength or power used by the various lenses that Yuri and Mew can pick up for the camera they use. The lenses require spirit power to use, and this can be obtained by taking photos of ghosts. The lenses have a variety of different effects, such as healing yourself or dealing extra damage. Ren has a different camera, and while he doesn't have access to the variety of lenses, his camera has a burst mode which will take multiple shots in quick succession at the cost of a longer reload time. The burst mode can be upgraded as the camera does not require to absorb spiritual energy, 
but I managed just fine without needing to upgrade it. You have different varieties of film to choose from, and the type of film determines how much damage you deal, as well as how long it takes to reload. You can also save photos you've taken with the camera, so you can look at them any time. As you fight ghosts, you will see spirits appear around them, which will increase as you take more photos of them. Once you see five or more around the ghost, your targeting reticule will glow red, and the photo you will take will deal more damage and knock the ghost back. If you take a photo of a ghost just before they attack you, you can achieve a fatal frame shot, where you can briefly take photos in quick succession without using up film or reloading. This makes the crush and healing lens really useful for Yuri and Mew, and the burst shot attack for Ren. Once the game has been completed, a side story featuring Ayane from the Dead or Alive series is unlocked where she searches the mountain for a missing girl. Unlike the other characters, Ayane does not have a camera obscura to defend herself, but she is able to hide from ghosts and briefly stun them with a spirit flashlight. Her sections in the game are more stealth based, opting to sneak past and stun ghosts than outright defeating them. Another thing I liked about the game is its fatal glance system. Once a ghost has been defeated, there is a window of opportunity for you to touch them, and when you do for the first time, you get a glimpse of the history behind the ghost which is shown as a fuzzy VHS styled scene. I did enjoy learning a little more about the souls you encounter, and it helped build on the story for me. There is one particular ghost though which you can't perform a fatal glance on. This ghost seems to serve as a malevolent force wanting to hunt you down over the course of the game, and doesn't seem to tie in with any lore in the game's story or area. She's just there. So, while still out of place, she's pretty spooky nonetheless. The game does provide a lot of reading material, detailing the thoughts of some of the characters and the customs and lore around Mount Hikami, so I did enjoy learning more about the game's setting and world. However, the game does have its share of faults, and we're going to go into those in. The Bad The setting and gameplay also works against the game as well as for it. You'll be revisiting parts of Mount Hikami quite often, and knowing exactly where to go and where some items are, I feel lessens the tension. Sure, the ghost placement and variety changes when you revisit areas in a later chapter, but perhaps having parts of the area change as you go back due to the plot or the link between the world of the living and the dead can go a long way in making a more familiar place more ominous and disturbing. In terms of the gameplay, as you collect items in the game, you may encounter a ghostly hand grab you, dealing minor damage while you shake it off. The first time I can understand it being startling, but when it happens to you again and again, and up to five or more times in a single chapter, it just gets old quick and really cheapens the mechanic. Thankfully, you can avoid the hand if you release the button to pick up items quick enough, and the hand does not discriminate between you picking up items or important story material. But perhaps changing up the random scares, like having the hand grab you before a ghostly face pops out and suddenly attacks you, or being ambushed while picking up items would have made the mechanic still annoying but at least fresh as you wouldn't know what to expect when you pick up items. Doesn't also help that when picking up items and opening doors, it's a process in itself as you slow to a crawl when doing it. I know this is to try and build tension, but if you're sick of the ghost hand then it's tedious. The game I feel is also too generous with healing items, with an abundance of healing items and film found throughout the level, and a generous amount given to you at the start of each level which didn't really make me feel like I was in danger. Once I got the lens which could heal me when I dealt damage, I didn't end up using healing items at all for the most part. You do get ranked at the end of the stage based on how quickly you finished it and the items you haven't used, and you'll get points which you can spend on items before starting a stage, or upgrading your camera and lenses. This only applies for normal difficulty or higher. Scores are not recorded on easy if you want to experience the story. Normal is the highest difficulty until you beat the game and unlock nightmare difficulty. I felt the characters in this game were pretty underdeveloped, if you excuse the pun. Yuri, I found, doesn't have a very broad range of facial expressions, essentially no selling a ghost which appears in front of her in a cutscene. Whether that's down to her being used to seeing ghosts or not, it's hard to know as you have to rely on journal entries for the most part to get an idea of a character's thoughts throughout the game. Mew, I'm not so sure if she's angry or not at certain times, and Ren doesn't seem to feel bad at all or really even care when a friend of his has gone missing on Mount Hikami because he'd sent him on a job. Even Ayane's inclusion in the game doesn't seem to contribute to anything in the story, and could have been left out altogether. I feel that her missions are to try and get the series out to a broader audience. You got more out of Fatal Glancing the Ghosts and learning about them, than you do the characters you play as. This issue is more of a personal one I experienced with the game, but I'm hoping that by the time this review goes live, some of the technical issues I've had with the PC version have been fixed or at least addressed. I've had numerous freezing issues with the game when trying to replay chapters, with chapter 1 and chapter 2 being the big culprits here. 
Chapter 1 would freeze, causing me to forcibly quit the game when introducing the tutorial to me whenever I tried to replay it to beat my score, and Chapter 2 would freeze after I'd picked up and read a note in Hisoka's room. I found changing the resolution before the scene seemed to have fixed the problem, but it's only worked once. Replaying the level after I'd beaten it will still cause the game to freeze at that point. Thankfully, every other level plays normally whenever I've had to replay them to get points for upgrading the camera and lenses, and this issue isn't present on the console versions. I think I've complained enough here, so let's wrap things up with... The Opinion Project Zero Maiden of Blackwater isn't by all means a bad game, but it's certainly not the strongest in the series. That accolade goes to Project Zero 2 Crimson Butterfly, which already got a Wii make. Get it? Like the rest of the series, the game's strength lies in its settings, visuals and atmosphere, setting up convincing and uneasy locations which was a treat to play in the dark at night, as well as its gameplay mechanics with the camera obscura and fatal glance. However, this also works against the game with all the backtracking, the ghost hand and the relative generosity this game is with items basically cheapening and weakening the elements of horror and helplessness as you go along. I wasn't a big fan of the character development, and I also did have some technical issues with the game which was a mild nuisance, but overall my experience with the game has been pretty mixed. It's not great, but not terrible. If you do enjoy horror games, then by all means this series is one worth checking out. It's just a bit weird with the choice of remastering this game when you could have given the other games the same treatment and released them as a trilogy for the first three games, or a collection if the fourth game got an official western release, as well as the remaster of this game of course. I do hope to see Project Zero return to form as the second game really scared younger me and I really don't want to see this series die, again if you excuse the pun. With that though, I think it's time for my rating. I would give Project Zero Maiden of Black Water this photo I took of the main characters bullying this poor ghost out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.